Can you see the clock up there? 10 o'clock, nice and bright. So this is Burgos, which is kind of in between Madrid and the northern coast of uh, Spain. I uh, rode up from Madrid, trust me, there's the clock going off. So I rode up this afternoon and there was a really strong wind, which was kind of trying to blow me off all the way uh, up to Burgos, got here probably eight o'clock, something like that. Nice hotel, Hotel Abba, kind of up that way. Um, and Burgos is lovely, up market, uh, good night lives. Because you're in the north, they don't have tapas, they have pinchos, and I'll show you some video of what pinchos looks like. Yeah, Burgos is really nice, good retail as well. I'll do a bit of that tomorrow. Lovely. Stuck inside the gift shop, why did I come here now? It was the best idea, looking for a souvenir now. Overpriced tea towels were what I was requesting. May you live through times much more interesting. Don't buy the t-shirt. So this is where the old town meets the new town. You see quite a lot of this in Spanish cities, Spanish towns that I visited. There's a real demarcation between the old town, looks very cute, medieval, and the new town. Begos has got some wonderful museums. Um, some of the early human traces in Europe uh, were found just outside the city, so there's a good museum there. So these are pinchos, and they're like a northern Spanish equivalent of tapas. And uh, here I am in Burgos and uh, every street corner's got these. There's loads of restaurants and uh, little bars that do this kind of thing. And the thing about pinchos is that normally they're served on bread. So a slice of bread with something on top of them. They're really nice. And after your pinchos, why not go and kickstart your type two diabetes by tucking into something sweet. And then it was getting dark, I walked along the edge of the city wall, there were bats flying, really pretty. There's a magnificent medieval gate here that goes into that Playa Mayor, so looking out from the other side. I bet you there's some good Airbnbs around there, I bet you could stay. So the bars look good and the food looks good and the old town looks really pretty. But really what we need is like an evening market that you could go and have a wander around and do some retail. Yeah, I think we can do that. So I'm up early because I want to head up to Bilbao. I'm going to go kind of the scenic route today. That's the Hotel Abba Burgos. Very nice. Can recommend it. And then the old town of Burgos kind of sits in the dip down there. You can see the cathedral that I was at, the spires of the cathedral there, the bell towers, and so the kind of old town sits in the dip. Um, it's really picturesque, so it's surrounded by fields. There's a lot of wheat production around Burgos. Um, I'm up early to get out because I, I, the, the ride up from Madrid was horrible. I had this horrible, strong crosswind um, and it's windy now, I can see, but I want to get out on the road and get up to Bilbao. Lovely. Okay, let's crack on. There's the bike. So I looked at the map and there's a fast way along the motorway. And then, as my dad would say, there's the pretty way. And I chose to go the pretty way. Roads in Spain, those A roads, the equivalent to our A roads, are just stunning really stunning, empty, well-maintained. And I got to a bit that goes through the hills and you can see those switchbacks there. So now what you've got is two or three minutes of me riding those switchbacks. This was a Saturday morning, okay? Saturday morning, about 10, 11 o'clock. And look how built up the traffic is. I think I see two cars. So this is on my GoPro that's attached to the crash bar at the front of my bike. For any of you that 
watch motorbike videos like this you'll know that that's not the best place to put it because it wildly exaggerates the amount that you lean apparently the best place to have it is on your helmet because that gives you context so as my pal Brian tells me and it was warm high 20s nothing there at all and in the distance is the um, coastline as you drop into Bilbao so I hope that you like these videos I've got loads of videos on YouTube now um, do me a favor press the subscribe button um, I do a mix of stuff like touring and motorbike stuff and playing with my cars and things like that a real mix of stuff then this drop down into a, a, a fairly um, mundane northern Spanish industrial town and then from there I went off the track again and down some smaller single roads the equivalent of B roads and again they were super well maintained I didn't bother putting <clears throat> I didn't bother putting the uh, the video in because this can get a bit monotonous can't it So I've never been to Switzerland, but I understand in Switzerland there's quite a lot like this, you know, switch back after switch back. And you kind of get into the swing of it, literally, figuratively and literally. What I did see was some of the some of the bikers and uh, I had an epiphany because other bikers in Spain they don't give you the nod they hold out their they hold out their hand they hold out their left hand as a bit of a wave you can see that guy did it there and um, it struck me why why they do that of course because we drive on the other side of the road in the UK you can't take your hand off the throttle to put your hand out whereas in Europe you can so you can ride along keep your hand on the throttle and put your hand out just to acknowledge another rider it took me a while to understand why they did that I think that's the last one yeah that's the last one and then from here it was I, I took it nice and easy before I got to Bilbao um, there's kind of a, a, a Repsol petrol station at the bottom of this and from there I scooted off into those other hills opposite probably an hour away from Bilbao so I've just got here to uh, Bilbao ferry port that's the ferry the Salamanca up at the top there they're actually already loading so we need to crack on but look at all the bikes here good number see you later for a change it wasn't all BMWs either there was a real mix of stuff some things I'd never seen a rocket there so that's like my pal Brian's my one there was this um, shaft drive Honda that I'd never seen before there was Harleys there was a, a Triumph look at that there I think it's a Husqvarna don't know real mix of stuff of course there was a few BMWs but they were by no means the majority and then from here we loaded up into the ferry and then so this is what a uh, cabin looks like when you have it as single occupancy so um, I've literally just got in and just dumped all my stuff off luckily you can't see me because I'm in my spare so if you have four people in here they, they bring these down it becomes a little bit cozy um, TV and the TV plays video on demand. There's loads of USB sockets and there's um, European and UK plugs. These are just um, reading lights. And then the bathroom is bijou, you know, like a caravan bathroom. So shower, loo, sink, all works really well. I've, uh, so this is my second time on this boat. Um, yeah. So this looks like an outdoor window, but it's not. It's just a backlit um, 
backlit picture. Various options for Wi-Fi. For 17 quid, you get six hours, which you can stop and start. So you can switch it on, switch it off. I did it. Bit of a highlight on this one. An RAF helicopter landed on to take some uh, people off who weren't very well. And then this is the run into Portsmouth. That's the southern bit of the Isle of Wight. Looking towards, now looking towards Portsmouth in the distance. Um, we docked at 6.30 and then everyone gets ready about 6. Docked at 6.30, there was a queue to get off. Uh, I was on the road by 7, so I was through this by 7. Hope you enjoy it. Like and subscribe and I'll be doing another one whenever I do my next trip. Thank you very much indeed. Take care. Bye.